What is going on? Welcome to the Beyond Homo Sapien podcast. Sonia, great to have you here. Thanks so much for joining. So we can talk about a really sensitive issue today, which is something that I've been talking about on this show for the past couple of weeks because it's been getting a lot more attention inside of honestly, not really the mainstream media, but here in kind of the backgrounds on social media, we're hearing a lot about this issue related to child sex trafficking and this potentially happening at the highest levels of our government. And, um, and you're someone that I've connected with on social media and you have a really great Facebook group called Voices Against Child, is it Voice Against Child, uh, child Trafficking or Child Sex Trafficking? Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate yeah, this. Uh, this is um, this is fantastic that I get to actually speak about this. Yes, it is called Voices Against Child Trafficking. Uh, Chelsea Karen and Mike Zagara and myself, we have this group. We are admins of this group. And right now we are um, we are actually just hit 5,000 people. And this is just, few, just in just a few days. Uh, people are very interested to speak right now and voice out about this topic. So it's, it's, it's brewing in everybody right now. They, 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 they feel they need to speak up. So groups like this right now, if you have opportunity to, to join the groups like this, join because we need two more conversations. And thank you so much for having me because I really appreciate um, for you giving me uh, time and space to talk about this. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think that this is this is kind of the issue that is happening collectively right now. Um, I've talked about this on the show before. I think it's very suspicious that the mainstream news media is not reporting on this issue, despite it being basically something that's on a lot of people's minds right now. And it is something that is in the news, right? It's something that's being talked about in inside of our collective culture more than more than it seems like ever before i've been following this issue since 2015 when it first started coming out through the, these uh wikileaks emails you know the john podesta emails that were leaked and people started to come up with this this pizzagate theory of as it's been called that you know the elites in government are are operating an international child uh child sex trafficking ring um and now i i we're coming up one week from today on the you know, the day of awareness, essentially, on July 30th, which is, um, I know, a big part of why you're here. So I wanted to ask you to share us a little bit with us a little bit about like, what have you been researching related to this issue? And what are you really trying to do to bring awareness to what's happening? Well, myself, too, for many years, I have been really involved in the research, you know, reading about it, you know, opening my mind that this is even a possibility. And I'm myself mother, so this is very, very, uh, <laughs> I'm very, um, you know, possibly afraid that something some might ha uh, happen to my kids as well. So I want to be aware, I want to learn, I want to uh, be able to spot somebody trying to, you know, um, speak to my children and possibly kidnap them or you know who who what what else might happen so um so basically uh these are some numbers that probably people will be like no this cannot be this can be so every 40 seconds a child goes missing um 800,000 kids are missing in the united states of, of those 800,000 kids uh 497 are trafficked when child is trafficked is not only for sex which is mind blowing that child can be trafficked for sex, but it's also for organ harvesting and it's also for labor. Sometimes um, we don't actually, everything what we do around us, look at your, around yourself right now as you're listening to this, what, what can you look at, do you have in your home that child possibly could make? Clothes, shoes, uh, any technology, um, food. We have children in any industry right now working for free and those children are possibly just taken from, um, they're either from third world countries or they're just taken from home and, you know, they decide what they will do with, with the child. Uh, and the sad, sad thing is that your child might be the one that um, might, might serve as, a, as a somebody who will, who will give their organs for, you know, some other child that needs organs or, or adult. So that's, that's really sad that, um, it makes me emotional every time I, I talk about this. It, it makes me very, uh, very aware and very sad that we came to this point in our life that our kids are being used uh, because they cannot speak up. 
Yeah. No, so. it's uh, it's something that harks out of a post-apocalyptic movie or something of that variety. Um, and it's something that seems so terrible that it couldn't possibly be true. Um, and especially if we're talking about the idea of, of people in general, especially kids being kidnapped for their organs and having their organs har harvested and things of this variety. But this is something that, that is coming to light, especially over in China, that, that the Chinese government really is responsible for a lot of organ harvesting around the world uh, underneath, you know, obviously on the black market. Um, and, uh, and this is something that they're doing right now to the, the uh, how do you say, the Uyghurs, the Ugh Uyghurs, which is a, a minority group in China that is currently being suppressed and they're being in many cases taken to concentration camp looking, you know, establishments. And if, if reports are true, they're, ha they're experiencing organ harvesting and stuff like that. There's all sorts of rabbit holes you can go on on the internet um, that have, you know, photographic evidence or video evidence of this sort of, sort of thing. And it's very easy for us to dismiss that as a conspiracy theory or some sort of misinformation campaign. But if we look through the treasure, the treasure troves of history, we see that unfortunately, things of this variety are more real than we might have imagined. Like this sort of stuff has been happening for hundreds, if not thousands of years in one form or another. And now here in 2020, thanks to the internet, we are kind of seeing that firsthand and we're kind of having a window into some of this evil that has been happening collectively for thousands of years in one form or another. So I think that what you're doing is super important because you're kind of shedding the, the flashlight on what's happening in these dark corners. Absolutely. And um, just because this group, what we have, Voices Against Child Trafficking, Facebook group, please, everybody who's listening, join. Uh, just because I see how, is, how fast it's growing, I see people are really aware. They're ready to speak. This is, this is a good sign. And I actually connect with admins of other groups, which I don't know actually the name, but if you look up, you can find other groups as well that are on this. Join all of these groups. I suggest joining all of these groups and be part of this uh, conversation. Uh, it, these groups are growing so fast right now because people are done. They are done being quiet. They're done. Um, they are done um, letting our kids being used. Um, so um, what we really want in this group is to have conversation, raise awareness, and have um, actual steps and actionable steps to be taken. We need to take actionable steps. We need to make uh, hold our government uh, accountable for this. And we want them to uh, help us, um, you know, reduce this, um, reduce everything what's happening with our kids, um, sex trafficking, um, and organ harvesting, and everything what's happening. We want them to actually uh, to reduce these numbers and actually possibly bring them to zero. Because this should not be happening to any child in um, not only in America in in the world. So it's really sad that. Um, the some things that you should know about is that uh, in um, in countries like um, you know China, countries like uh, Mexico, or um, you know there are so many like Thailand. Um, a lot of Americans go there to uh, pay to to use a child, whether to rape a child or to play in a weird way with a child or whatever they feel like doing it. They can do anything you possibly you can imagine to a child for very little money. Some of these, some of these kids can pay $10 and do whatever you want with them. So which is very, very scary. So um, what I'm trying to say, even uh, if you feel, oh, well, this is, some, this is happening somewhere. And no, it's actually it's happening in your backyard. Um, those people that actually live next to you, <laughs> they are you know, they might be even related to you. So you have to pay attention and you have to start looking for some signs of a person who is uh, possibly uh, interested in children. It starts with a child porn. Somebody actually says it start, starts with a porn and then develops in a child porn, right? So I don't know enough uh, if this is how it is, but I believe this is how it starts. But let's just talk about child porn right now because this is why we're here. So somebody who is interested in child porn uh, will probably have files on their laptop or computer 
of the child for, and then they will actually take an action, right? So the scary part is that they try to right now turn the pedophilia into something that's normal. It's not normal. So um, even though I understand uh, that might be something that we can help pedophiles at early stages to, to uh, navigate, their emotions and everything around child, which is really crazy to, for me to even have talk about this. But um, what I'm trying to say, the people that actually have taken action and abused child, uh, raped or touched in any way, they are already abusers and they should actually, um, they should uh, have a cons consequences for this. So this is what we are talking about. So a uh, pedophile can be anybody in your area that can be, um, First of all, your husband, your father, your brother, your teacher, I mean, teacher of the child, a uh, priest. We have a lot of priests that are doing this nasty things and they never ever get consummated, they get moved to another church, right? So, and also um, we have a lot of, um, anybody who is a teacher to a child can be, uh, can be somebody who is a, perpetrator and can, can harm your child anybody who is around even if you um even if um uh you need to watch for anybody who is watching your child even if it's a woman don't think only men harm ch children women ch harm children um so many horrible stories we hear about nannies having access to their children and eventually get connected and sell and you know kidnap or you know, harm your child in in, in, in in a way that is, you know, uh, you know, either sexually or or simply give access to somebody who can harm them. So be very, very aware that your safe is your child is not safe. And um, one thing that I really want to talk about here is us parents, all the parents are listening right now, we need to start talking um, to kids about this. It's not easy. And I had conversation with my kids about this and it wasn't easy. I didn't know how to tell my child that some adults are good and some are not when it comes to children some will touch them inappropriately and want to have some certain feelings when they touch them and so i need to really um understand how i want to say this but i one thing i i, I knew i want to talk, have a conversation so my children right now we openly talk about this about pedophilia and they are very comfortable about this conversation and they are very aware they have to take care of themselves so everywhere. Yesterday we went to the beach and we had a conversation. We said, remember, we have to be very careful. First of all, somebody can kidnap you and they will appear as a family. They will come as a, a husband and wife and they'll have two kids. Those kids that might be also victims, they must be there, right? And they will try to play with you. They will take you on side and you will be gone. In a split of a second, when I turn on my head, you'll be gone. And this is what happens all the time. This is you have to be aware of where your child is at 24 seven. If, because right now, uh, children really, uh, ch children are disappearing so fast that we have to really start asking ourselves, what are we, you know, how, how much are we really watching our children and how much are we even paying attention? And not because, um, uh, just because everything is really developing so fast and they're, they're becoming very uh, skillful. So we have to be aware of everywhere where we are. For example, when I went to a store, actually uh, two years ago, um, I was just uh, with my kids. I was uh, looking uh, on the shelves of some products and I heard my kids were right next to me and I could like reach them almost, but like a little further, further away, but I could still hear them. And the, the, the men approached them and start asking them little like with lower voice asking, hey, are you, are you here? Um, do you live around? How often do you come? Uh, do you like here? Um, you know, and things like that, that I um, realized he is trying to uh, ask some questions. And if he was a genuine person, he will look around and be like, where is your mom? Or where is your parent? And then he will look at me, he will make eye contact and he will say, your kids are cute. And then he will continue asking the questions. That's a normal conversation. But when somebody starts asking questions to kids without making eye contact with parent first, this person has a different agenda. So be very aware that I'm not saying that you should not let kids talk to anybody. But first, uh, if once you make eye contact with somebody who's talking to your kids, game is over. They will not do anything. 
So this is, this is what I try to say. Always pay attention how people are talking to your kids, right? So I don't let anybody talk to my kids without, um, without acknowledging me. It's just simply my rule always been, um, it was just like something I always felt it's, it's the right way to do. And I don't actually talk with kids without uh, looking for their parent or somebody who's taking care of them. So uh, pay attention how people talking to your kids and also um, you need to educate your ch children about how uh, somebody's behaving around them or how they can touch them and how they cannot touch them. And, you know, even if they notice about their friends uh, being touched in a certain way, they should be able to comfortable to tell you about this, right? Yeah, and I, uh, I think that's great tips. I mean, I think what I'm hearing a lot from you is stuff that is not necessarily to instill in your kids a sense of paranoia. Like you don't want to make them paranoid and it's not to say that like all adults or all people are out to to get to get them or to to molest them or rape them but more just awareness that this is a thing that exists and here are some warning signs of what that might look like not to necessarily um not to necessarily be terrified or living in a state of fear that that's going to happen but more so the way that i look at stuff like this is more so okay we've t we've brought awareness to the issue the kids are educated on it and it's almost like a shield you know it's almost like a shield that you put up around the family or around your loved ones and you say okay it's not going to happen because we talked about it they are aware about what to do they do have that sort of training as to okay this is a red flag this is a green flag and then you can proceed more confidently you know because you have you can have that confidence of like we did have that conversation. They do know what's up. They do know the signs of, the, of X, Y, and Z. Um, and then it's, it also sets, uh, you know, uh, just like anything with kids, you've got to tell them like, here's my expectations. You know, if you have, and then they have that permission where if something ever did happen in a worst case scenario, they know this is not okay. And mom said, I should come and talk to her about this. But if you never open that door, if you never talk to them about it ever, then, and then something did happen where they were maybe touched inappropriately or they were talked to inappropriately or something, they don't know to come talk to you. They don't know that that's an open invitation. Does that make sense? I feel like that's where a lot of Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. That's and where a lot that, of problems are, are happening is a lack of education and a lack of sexual education in general with kids. As kids don't know that they even can come and talk to their parents about issues of sex of any type and then we you know that creates a lot of problems in a lot of different ways and it might be you know an unexpected pregnancy it might be uh some sort of some sort of uh or even with drugs you know getting involved with drugs because you're hanging out with the wrong crowd because your parents raise you to think all drugs are evil and if you ever talk to us about it you're going to be kicked out of the house like no that's that's not you know you gotta say hey you can talk to me about this if this if this happens with you you can bring that to my attention and you, you'll be safe. And I feel like that's huge. Absolutely. I actually, uh, myself and Alex growing up, I didn't have this conversation. Can you turn your mic up a little bit? I can't hear you. Oh, here you go. So actually, uh, when I was um, a child and when I was growing up, I didn't have this, I didn't have this conversation with my parents. Um, I just didn't. They, now I am actually having this conversation with my kids because I, I feel it's important. Not only that the world changed, and I feel that I want to be the first person to know about anything, what, what is going on in their world. Um, I feel that uh, we are educate our kids about uh, all kinds of dangers. Don't touch the stove because it's hot. Don't go, the bear might be dangerous. Don't touch the snake, it might be poisonous. Um, don't go, uh, you know, don't be in a you know, dark alley or anything like that. But we don't really educate our kids about, don't, about adults and what adults might do to, to our kids. So we need to find a way, how can we verbalize this? What is whatever is comfortable for you, but you have to verbalize this to your child. Don't let any, any religion or how you were brought up or how you're you know, um, raising your children to stay, you know, uh, stand in a way of you actually uh, teaching them how they can protect themselves. So be open because right now is not time to uh, be quiet about this. Now uh, time is actually to speak about it. My child, my, my one son is five, my other one is nine, and I still spoke to them about this. I don't know how old is your child, but uh, you know they need to know about these things. I just watched video yesterday, um, actually two days ago on Instagram, 
um, there is a man uh, speaking with his, I'm not sure what the child was to him, um, but uh, he was trying to say how she is, um, how she loves how they play and how she is giving consent to him. Um, and then he was explaining, and then he said, listen, she's saying she wants that. So he turned around and he asked her, do you want to play uh, touching each other, right? And uh, she said, yes, I want to play with that. And he asked, why do you want it? He said, yes, because it's fun, right? So kids, they don't know, the, they can play with anything you give them. They can, that's at their time. But when this child is 13 years old or even, you know, in 10 years old, this child realizes, wow, this is not actually normal. This is absolutely not normal. So, you know, uh, that child in the video was maybe five, six years old. Uh, everything can be, made, can be made playful to them. But again, we need to understand that this is uh, not good for our mental health of our children, that we need to um, really pay attention that, um, and I, mean, I absolutely don't believe that the child can give us consent to any kind of touching or anything like that. So, or uh, because I heard all kinds of stories out there that child can give a consent or child said yes to me, that's not okay. Yeah. So, child cannot give a consent to me. So. No, and in fact, I feel like I don't want to get too down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories and stuff, but if there was some sort of evil satanic Illuminati pulling all the strings behind the curtain, I feel like this part of a lack of education around this issue would be a part of how this would be enabled collectively across the world is have is you got to pay attention to like okay in school what are they not teaching the kids about they're not teaching them about this issue to uh, to the level to which they should um and i feel like you know an argument could be made there might be a reason for that but you know that that um if this is something that's supposed to be it's almost like this is an issue that our kids and us are kept as much in the dark about as we possibly can. Like, I mean, just look at what's happening with the coronavirus. And I don't wanna make a statement on like whether or not coronavirus is real or false or whatever. Um, I personally think it's a real virus, but, um, but you know, all day, every single day for months now, we've had over and over again, the numbers of COVID cases reported on the news 24 seven of how many COVID cases there are, how many people are dying, all this kind of stuff, 24 seven. Um, and those are numbers we should be monitoring. And those are, you know, very important, tragic numbers. But what about this number of, of almost half a million kids who are missing? Like, what about that number tracked every day? You know, things like this. This is a real pandemic. And thank you for bringing this up. This is a real pandemic because every 40 seconds, child goes missing. And every 40 seconds, you don't get, people don't get Corona. So this is how, this is how we know that we should actually, uh, just like we, we have statistics about people getting corona. We have to have a statistics about child uh, being uh, in missing or you know child being abducted. We need to understand what is going on. We do have a numbers that we go by, and uh, pretty much um, a lot of um, government sites you can go and um, actually learn about what are those real numbers. But we need to have actual real numbers to looking at you know update it every day and see. You know, not just like some uh, some random article uh, written a year ago about these numbers. We need to know, you know, what was yesterday, what is today, what is going to be tomorrow, and what are we doing, um, and how um, how what we are doing is actually helping or not helping, right? So we need to learn about this. And again, I'm very thankful that we have this conversation because this is where it starts. Having conversation, people become curious and they start reading, they start learning, they start educating themselves. Again, what you said, I don't wanna to get too much into this rabbit hole and they want to, you know, you pick how much you, where you wanna go. You pick how much you wanna educate yourself on this. But as long as you educate, that's good. So you don't have to um, talk about uh, topics that you're not comfortable with, but you must be, uh, you must be talking right now about uh, child trafficking. Um, sexual abuse of children, organ harvesting, because this is not, this is actually real. This is not something that people are coming up and ma making up. This is actually real. So we need to be a little uncomfortable, but then we have to be comfortable speaking about it because it's very impor important. Because if you're uncomfortable speaking about this right now, imagine how uncomfortable are kids actually who are being abused. So I guess, I, I think they're more uncomfortable than you are right now, right? So let's start talking because 
uh, every time we talk about this, there is possibility that the child gets uh, saved by somebody just, you know, taking action. Me, I'm taking action by having this group, um, you know, having people come together and speak about it. We have a petition uh, where we are asking, um, and I want to go over a few things, we are asking for um, government to put some uh, things in place where uh, we can regulate um, everything what is happening. So um, do you want me to go over a few things we are asking? Yeah, please go ahead. And um, I'll put a, if you're listening to this show on the podcast or on the YouTube channel, I'll put a link down to the petition in the comments, in the description. Yes, please. And that would be fantastic. So I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Your mic cut out again. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, so the few things that we are actually uh, looking with this petition and would like for you to sign it. I'll just go over a few. We have a lot of, we have 11 things, right? But I'll just go a few. So we are asking for immediate uh, prosecution of any persons connected with the wrongdoing regardless of their position. Immediate investigation of people in high places suspected of the crimes of child trafficking or trafficking, not excluding high level politicians, show business and leaders in entertainment industries such as actors and producers. And stricter sentencing for offenders, including not allowing judges to commute the sentences for off sex offenders at their discretion. Uh, more thorough and exhaustive investigation, um, uh, more comprehensive laws and regulations. And I want you to go, guys, and read about this. Uh, we read more about this. I just want to, um, I want you to read everything about it. But uh, I, I just want to mention a few things that are very important: protective regulations and added funding for child services, as well as creating agencies that serve victims of child trafficking. We need more funds for this we need more jobs, we need more funds, and we need people that do better job uh, with, uh, when it comes to uh, child services. Um, regulation of foster care system. We have a better system to prevent foster care parents from harming, abusing, and exploiting the children in, the, in their care. Raising awareness by giving voice to and adding funding for leaders that are combating, combating child and human trafficking. Um, this could include, but it's not limited to the public service, service announcement, billboards, print and social media campaigns and funding for organizations that are allocating and rescuing victims. Mandatory training for all companies, large corporations and small businesses alike for their leadership teams and employees in order to understand child trafficking methods in order to spot and prevent them. Absolutely mandatory training in our education system from elementary school through college. So, and there is more, I didn't actually read everything, but this is what, when you sign petition, this is what you stand for. This is what we stand for. This is what we need. And these are just the basics of, of the changes we need. There are more that we need, but this is just, let's just do a basic things and then we can do more. So if you're listening to this, please sign the petition, share this petition. Uh, we are looking for a million voices and we will get there one by one. Uh, we uh, need every voice. So if you sign, you are the voice for these children. These children cannot speak for themselves. So they, they need us to speak for them. For them. So um, for me, that's a major thing is to really be uh, join our group, um, Child Against, um, um, Voices Against Child Trafficking, and sign this petition um, and start having conversations. That's the that, that's how we start. And um, again, we will develop this in something uh, bigger. We are uh, right now connecting with other admins of other groups. Uh, some of them are organizing different protests and we want to explore and learn about it and see if we can offer this to our audience as well. So things like that, that we are again, um, collaborating with everybody who is uh, helping this cause. Um, right now, there are so much speculations out there you can, if you don't like this, don't talk about it, but speak about important things that are actually happening. So um, everybody, if, um, if you follow uh, Operation Underground Rescue, they have amazing stats, they have amazing uh, um, information um, about, about what is really happening and how they're helping um, child trafficking victims um, yep. and yep. how they're rescuing them. 100%. They're also, erase child trafficking 
there's third ministries. There's so many places you can go and look for information. So um, information is out there and this information is vetted and you can go look on it. Those people that are more curious, they will, uh, like I know Paul, you are, uh, they can look into things that are really happening in our, when it comes to Hollywood, when it comes to our politicians, what is really happening, you can go and dig into that. I will let you do that. But um, again, just be open-minded and um, use your eyes to see what is really going on. Because uh, media is not going to cover this. Don't expect media to cover this. You and me, we are the media now. We are taking yes. over. We are taking over because media is not doing a favor to uh, to people like us. Media is not doing favor to kids. So we need to take over because we can, because we have a voice and we are adults and we can fight for our kids. We don't need to, uh, when people say, well, show me their resource. We'll go and look for resources. It's easy to find, but don't expect ABC News, CNN, and Fox to be on this. They will not for a very long time until they really have to give up and write about it. They write here and there about some things that happen, but it's not enough. As much as we see, they write about, uh, right now, about either Democrats or Republicans. They, every day, they put out so many articles, but they're not really fighting our fight. Our fight no. is right now to fight again, and possibly against all of those people, because we don't know who is involved in this. No, we don't. And I love your message. I love what you're saying here. This is all brilliant. And um, personally, again, I'm not going to get too down the rabbit hole of politics. But um, at the end of the day, I feel like it's pretty evident something fishy is happening. There's something up. Something's going on. There's some shit going on there that we don't know about. And, uh, and at the end of the day, I feel like, okay, let's use this example of like Trump and Quinon that you hear about. And I'm not, again, trying to make a statement over whether or not I believe in that or not, but more just the idea for people who don't know is that President Trump has a, you know, a secret task force of U.S. citizens and government officials and intelligence agents who are, you know, exposing this behind the scenes and they're chasing down everyone in Hollywood or at overseas who are involved and they're going to handle it and all this, that, the other thing. And um, personally, I, I feel like... So. I feel like if that is what's happening and that and President Trump really does have a secret plan that he's executing and he really is taking care of it, awesome. Sounds great. Like whenever that news breaks, I'll be applauding. Like sounds awesome. However, um, let's not assume that that's what's going on because what also could be happening hypothetically again, if there is some sort of, you know, secret agenda is what if that's just set up to then make us think that the government's handling it and then we don't do anything. Because I think that at the end of the day, what we need to do is do some, is we need to be the ones taking care of this issue. We can't just trust that the government or the CIA or the FBI or whoever, that they've got it covered, that they've got it handled because they, they might, if they do, that's awesome. Um, and you know, that's great for everyone. And, but let's assume that maybe they don't. Let's, let's assume that maybe they, they aren't covering this as much as we might hope. And then we can act accordingly because at the end of the day, the government is just supposed to represent you and me. They're just supposed to be a, uh, you know, a macro level manifestation of like what you and me and the average person believes. Whether or not that's true happening in 2020 is a different story, but that was the original intent of a representative government. They're supposed to represent the people. Um, so let's, instead of waiting for them to do their thing and represent what we want, we have to take action. We have to be the ones who are holding them accountable. We have to be the ones who sign a petition or put together a movement and say, look, like this is us saying to you, do your job. This is what the people want. Let the record show this is what we want. Um, you know what I mean? And then you can hold them accountable because then if they don't do it, if they don't go after that then we, right now we have, we have no real way of holding them accountable. Like without, a, without some sort of movement, without some sort of a petition, we have just, we're, we're not organized. There's no organization. And that's what I think a lot of people miss is we have to, we can, we can complain and moan and talk shit about the government all day, but we have to tell them what we actually want. We have to give them something to hold them accountable. The people. We the yeah. people have to tell them what we want. Yeah, because... the people have to say, look, we have a million voices on this petition saying, no shit, this is what we want. Make it happen. 
And then but until you do that, we can't hold them accountable. We haven't given them anything to say that this is what we want. So I think what I think you're totally right. That's what I'm trying to get at. Like this, we have to start doing something more beyond just raising awareness. You have to actually Absolutely. once awareness is raised, we have to do something. <laughs> yes. Um, sign petition. Uh, be part of the conversation. People are going to walk for this. Will you walk? I will. Will you? Right? There's no judgment, oh, but sure. will you? I will. So will you? Is this worth walking and doing products? Absolutely it is, right? So those are the actions. Donate. You don't want to do any of this? Donate. Donate money for to, to uh, agencies and places that actually can, can do something with it. Whether to print flyers out, whether to uh, uh, fund some um, rescue mission or um, anything possible that they need, they need, uh, they need your money. So um, you, can, you can actually start payment, uh, even $5 a month to, to some of these organizations and that will, that will mean a lot. So imagine if a million people put $5, $5 a month to these organizations, that will actually do a lot of things with that. So that's what I'm trying to say here. So even if you do one dollar, it's good. So whatever you can uh, donate to these organizations. If you have a birthday or anything, use this uh, opportunity to actually set up a fundraiser via Facebook to, to child rescue organizations of your choice. That, that's, that's my message, what I wanna say. So, um, and use any opportunity to actually, um, to your um, school, now that we are going to possibly be opened in, in fall, we don't know what is going on with that. Uh, we need to, I actually have, um, I, I made um, already like an outline and presentation that I'll be sharing in a group for everybody like me who wants to be involved. I want you to take this presentation and go to, um, um, go to your school and present this to children, ob obviously with, with approval of, of your school because all children need to learn about this. Uh, some of these things are um, how you can actually spot the victim. Uh, do you know how they access to our children via social media? Don't stop. Don't tell your kids stop using social media. Social media is not going to away. Teach them how to use it properly. Don't turn off their TikTok. Don't turn off their Facebook or Instagram or whatever they're using. Teach them how to use properly. Social media, they're born with this, so they, it's, not, it's never going to away. They will just be mad, they'll just be upset with you. So tell them, I, I let my kids use social media. Obviously, I'm manager of everything. I, I see every messaging comes in, that's me. I manage everything. But I, I, I teach them how to properly use it. If there is some conversation going on, I need to, be, I need to know about this. So, um, uh, so 90, I think it was like 97%, uh, how they get to our kids right now, their teenage years, is via social media. So what I do, uh, there is um, another girl, 16, 17 years old, will start talking to your child and obviously be friends for a few months. After a few months, they will meet, and then this, this girl will have possibly uh, two or three adults with her, um, accompanying her, and this is how many girls go missing, because they trust, to, uh, they trust another child that is their age so don't think that other children are involved and they're also not that they're also uh, abused just like your child uh, uh, child is being abducted will be so they're also uh, forced to communicate to other children via social media so they can uh, lure them and that they get abducted this just happened 40 minutes away from me to a child she's 13 years old she was speaking with this girl she was um, 16 um, they were speaking for many months. Finally, they decided to meet for a coffee. The other girl came with two other men. They just, they snatched her. They used her for, for a few months uh, uh, before they let her go. She wow. was raped five times a day. She wow. was, uh, she was sold five times a day to, uh, to other men to use her. This is 40 minutes away from me. She was found in Baba. So, uh, gas station. Wow. So imagine that this is just not somewhere. This is this is next to me, right? And I live outside of Philadelphia. So imagine how this is really happening. Um, and again, the the she was see or she was the trusted uh, uh, a girl her age that probably had a similar 
things they did a lot of probably same things and they finally decide to meet you know somewhere so be very um teach that your children that even somebody their age can be dangerous because also they're being forced to do that right so it's, it's really really scary there are so many they're very skillful these people are very skillful the skill for the new and me they know what's up as soon as we we, we caught up with something they have something new as soon as we we, we caught up with something they have something new so we have to be all the time very aware of what is going on um and also um um would you like to go or for me to go or a few things that are um how you how you actually can spot a victim i can go over that yeah sure i know we only got i've got about 10 minutes left but yeah let's let's go over that quickly let sure. me go over quickly and then um so i want people to actually get this uh, information so they maybe today they will be able to spot somebody like that so the child that is appearing mal malnourished um show signs of physical injuries or abuse typically avoiding eye contact social interaction um and uh, seeming to adhere to scripted or rehearsed responses in a social interaction um working long hours leaving at a place of employment checking in the hotels motels with older males uh, and referring to those males as a boyfriend or daddy um poor physical de dental health, tattoos branding on neck and or lower back, um, small children serving in a family restaurant. Um, and so not allowing people to, not, not, not allowing people to go into public alone or speak for themselves. So if you see those children come uh, with, with adult around and they cannot speak for themselves, that's an obvious sign. And um, you know, you need to teach your children to actually look at their uh, classmates and see if there's something going on with their classmates. So, and they can ask questions um, and things like that. It's uh, a multi-faceted you... issue. And there are a lot of people who are being abused at their own homes, you know, regardless of if they're being trafficked, um, they might just, the abuse might be happening from their own parents, from their own family and things of that variety too. That happens much more common than we want to admit. Absolutely. So if you go to uh, OURrescue.com slash training, you can actually take one hour training that will walk you through all, everything, um, kind of like what I mentioned and, and more, obviously, um, about how you can educate yourself on this topic and how can you uh, educate your children about this. Your children should watch this. So um, there is Operation, Operation Tassan um, that uh, we will have a movie night with, with our kids to to watch this and and the reason why because i want them to really be aware of everything what is going on of the reality of things i know um if if you are a parent and you think that this is too early to talk about kids it's not too early because kids are being uh kidnapped at, when they're babies one years old two years old three years old so any age you have kids they can be kidnapped so we need to speak to our children about this obviously when they're babies you don't speak to them but you know what i'm trying to say here um so so what I am uh, trying to say is just be open-minded. Paul, you like to uh, you know, talk about things um, that are way above what we can actually even read on some of these, what I say, vetted articles. So, but we have to be open-minded. The reason why this is not all over the place because obviously it, it is a secret yet. It is something that curious minds are trying to figure out at some point, everything was a conspiracy theory, and then it came to light, right? It always starts, and you know, we know it gets a kind of like branding of conspiracy theory because it's very hard to to um, it's hard to process this information. So when something is conspiracy theory, uh, don't be just be right away blind. Dig in, into that and see for yourself. Yeah. what is going on just to i mean see just the term conspiracy theory a lot of people don't even know this uh the phrase conspiracy theory was something that was created and invented by the cia during the cold war era to make it seem like a lot of these things that were coming up were not credible and just saying that it was just a theory and that was actually a cia uh you know campaign to introduce that phrase and it Absolutely. And it succeeded. <laughs> and, and that's that's actual how uh, how how it's being done. Yeah. Uh, right now, what we have that is fact checkers. 
fact checkers are they need to be fact checked <laughs> <laughs> yeah fact check the, who's fact checking the fact checkers <laughs> exactly who is fact checking fact checkers that's that's what we need to do and what we need to think um and again um just because um <clears throat> Uh, I was able to see people in this group. I see that people are not ready to talk about these kind of things. And now I can see clearly. So however you can get to person, do, do, do this way. Group is uh, currently only, we are only allowing posts uh, that are vetted. There are actually articles out there from, um, <clears throat> from known uh, agencies like uh, Operation Underground or um, uh, Child Trafficking. Uh, places we allow topics like that because again people are really not ready to to the in, into more uh, conversations like that but we have to be very respectful of that and um, but uh, also I always say just open your mind and start reading and learning for yourself. I love that and that's totally true right related to a lot of issues so um, thank you so much Sonia for doing this this has been a really great chat and um, I just want to, uh, is there anything, where can people find you if they want to follow what you're doing? What's the name of your group? And where can people go to sign this petition? Thank you so much for having me. This was uh, fantastic. Um, so if you go to Facebook group called again, um, Voices Against uh, Child Trafficking, Facebook group, please go to um, change.org slash and child trafficking. And I'll give you a link for you to post there. This is a petition. As soon as you join the group, you will see the petition. And um, also, uh, if you want to get some trainings, obviously, this is ourrescue.com slash training. If you want to get trainings on this, um, you can do that. So um, be active, talk about this, and um, join those groups. If it's, if it's uh, our group, obviously, you're welcome. But join any other group that talks about this, uh, because we want to be united on this front. We want to be loud. We need your voice. We need your action. Um, be voice, sign a petition, donate, learn, be part of this conversation. Because we are the media, media is not giving us voice, we are the, we are the new media now. We sure are. And um, the more, the quicker people wake up and realize that, the faster I think this is going to come. That voices like, shows like this one are the new media, 100%. Um, and July 30th, July 30th, please, if you go... Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to put my profile on, but anyway, if you go to this uh, Facebook group, uh, the main show Voices Against Child Trafficking, we provided all the information in the post to share and how to actually, um, how to change your uh, profile picture to blue, it says, end child trafficking. This way, we let the world know we are ending child trafficking now. We need your voice. So July it. 30th, mark your calendar. We need to be loud. I love it. Well, Sonia, yeah. thank you so much. And we'll talk again soon. I appreciate yes. you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much.